Welcome to our review on fertilizers. First thing that we need to know then is that when we're talking about plants, they have certain elements that they require for growth. And these are known as the essential elements. You need to remember the names of three of these essential elements that plants need for their growth. Nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. You also need to know what the actual symptoms of these different mineral deficiencies would be in our plants. So if we try to grow them in soil that was lacking in one of these essential elements, what would those plants look like? What observable features would there be that give us the hint about what mineral is actually deficient in the soil? So if we've got a lack of nitrogen in our soil, then the leaves are yellow and the plants don't grow very well. They've just got general poor growth. If it's a lack of phosphorus, then we get discoloured leaves and poor root growth. Whereas if it's a lack of potassium, then we have poor fruit growth and also discoloured leaves. So make sure you remember that nitrogen is yellow leaves, phosphorus and potassium are both discoloured. And then the other bits about the growth, whether it's general growth with our nitrogen, the roots with the phosphorus or the fruits with the potassium. So if our farmer actually notices that some of his crops are displaying some of these mineral deficiency symptoms, then that's not the end of the world. He doesn't just think, oh, well, that feels done. Just sell it off and move on. We can actually use chemicals called fertilizers to replace those elements which are used up by the plants as they grow. Key thing to remember about these fertilizers, though, is that they must be water soluble so that that means it can dissolve in the water and then be absorbed through the roots of the plant, because that's the only way these fertilizers get into our plants. Three key ones we need to remember then. Nitrogen will be absorbed as nitrate ions, NO3 minus, or as ammonium ions, NH4 plus. The phosphorus will be absorbed as phosphate ions, PO4 3 minus, and the potassium will be absorbed as potassium ions, which are K plus. So make sure you remember that it's not just nitrogen that's picked up, it's nitrate ions or ammonium ions to give us the nitrogen in the plant. So the most common type of fertilizer used is one called NPK fertilizer. And the reason that this is the most commonly used one is that it provides the three essential elements that we've been talking about, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, hence NPK, N for nitrogen, P for phosphorus, K for potassium. It's not just one fertilizer that you get as NPK. It's a whole range of different ones that have different ratios of those three essential elements. So the pictures at the bottom, I can show you the ratios there. You've got the one on the left, which is a 26 nitrogen, two phosphorus and 11 potassium, or the one on the right is 18 to 24 to 12. So that what farmers can do is they can look at the actual results of a soil test, identify the fact that their soil is severely lacking in nitrogen, for example, but it's actually pretty good on the phosphorus. And therefore they pick the one on the left because that gives them a large amount of nitrogen and only a very small amount of phosphorus because there's no point in replacing something that's already present in the soil. A very important process in the manufacturing of fertilizers is the harbour process. The reason it's so important is that the harbour process makes ammonia, which is the base of a lot of these fertilizers. And it does so using just the gases, nitrogen and hydrogen. So it's carrying out a reversible reaction. And we know it's reversible because of the reversible reaction symbol in the balance symbol equation there. What we end up with is our actual only raw materials are just nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. The nitrogen is going to come from the fractional distillation of liquefied air and hydrogen is made by reacting natural gas with steam. So we only have th three raw materials, the air, the natural gas and the steam. And from that, we will produce ammonia, which then goes on to be used in a huge range of other chemicals. So when we consider when we make fertilizers in a fertilizer factory, it's not just one fertilizer that's made that everyone uses because we need different fertilizers for the different agricultural needs of our farmers. 
So there are four different fertilizers that are very common. Ammonium nitrate, ammonium sulfate, ammonium phosphate and potassium nitrate. And the kind of questions that they used to like asking were they would list these four for you and then they tell you that a farmer has a lack of nitrogen in the soil, for example, and ask you to select the fertilizer to use and why. And all you need to do there is look at what the actual essential element that's lacking is and then pick the fertilizer that's got the greatest amount of it. So if we had a lack of nitrogen, then we'd pick ammonium phosphate because that has three nitrogen atoms in comparison to the two nitrogen atoms of ammonium sulfate and ammonium nitrate and the one nitrogen atom of our potassium nitrate. So it's a counting exercise. Whatever it's lacking, pick the one fertilizer that has the most of them in there and that's your justification. If we consider the overall process required to make those four fertilizers, we can summarize it in this diagram. So the green rectangles are the four fertilizers we've talked about, ammonium sulfate, ammonium nitrate, ammonium phosphate, and potassium nitrate. And then we've got the other chemicals we need in order to make them attached. So if we take ammonium sulfate, for example, we can see we start off with sulfur, which we convert into sulfuric acid, and we're going to react that sulfuric acid with the ammonia that we made through the harbour process using natural gas, air and our water there. So all those two go together and we make our ammonium sulphate. And you can see how it ties together for the other fertilisers as well. Hopefully at the end of this video you can now describe the importance of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium in terms of their use in plants. You can explain the importance of the harbour process in agriculture and describe the industrial production of fertilisers.